Hello, and welcome to Your Vote Counts. I'm Tomika Du from the League of Women Voters, helping to bring you this public nonpartisan voter service program. These general election interviews are made possible through the Capital Community Media via remote technology and in collaboration with the Leagues of Women Voters of Oregon and Marion and Polk counties. For this race, all candidates were invited. Candidates did not receive the questions developed by the League of Women Voters, AAUW, and neighborhood associations ahead of time. The candidates were asked to prepare a three minute statement telling about themselves, their qualifications, and their vision for the office if elected. I would now like to ask candidate Denise Bowles, who's running for Senate District 10, to share her opening remarks. Thank you. Thanks for having me here today. I'm State Senator Denise Bowles, and I feel very lucky to have spent nearly my entire life in the Salem area. I'm a graduate of Sprague High School. I ultimately got married here. We raised our three kids who attended the same public schools as my husband and I. I started my career, and now I am honored to have the opportunity to represent this community in the state capitol as their senator. To this day, my family lives in the same South Salem house that I grew up in. I love this community and the people who live here. As a kid, like most of my friends, I grew up picking strawberries on our local fruit farms, learned the value of a hard day's work during, doing graveyard shifts at the cannery in the summers. I've owned and operated several small businesses, served as a chief advisor to local elected leaders, and currently work in, Salem, or in community relations at Salem Health. The past few years, I've been fortunate to serve first as a member of the Oregon House, and now as a member of the Oregon State Senate. I've always been a problem solver whether it's something that comes up in my professional life, in our community, or at home with my family. My instinct is to want to jump in and help solve it. I think a lot of people in our community just want a few basic things from their government. Safe communities, strong schools, access to health care, jobs, and affordable cost of living. Senate District 10 isn't a hotbed of partisan politics. The vast majority of our friends and neighbors want leaders who will use some common sense to improve this community that we love. And that's the kind of leader I've tried to be. I truly value my deep roots and shared values I learned in this community. These ideals inform each and every decision that I make as a state senator. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. What methods do you propose for increasing the ability and willingness of senators to work together? What will it take to make this happen? You know, honestly, I believe that that is um, the first step is incumbent on the majority party to provide the forum and the opportunity for all ideas to be heard, all people to be invited to the table and be part of collaborative problem solving for this community. That's the kind of person that I've always been. Those are the kind of values that I bring. I came to the legislature because I work well with people. I'm very practical and I want to solve problems. So I think it has a, it, it takes a willing heart to be able to um, reach across the aisle listen to ideas that you disagree with, maybe change your opinions and come to some sort of a middle ground that really benefits the people in the state of Oregon. Thank you for that, Denise. Can you explain the concept of cap and reduce, which is being suggested to address reduction of greenhouse gases? Do you have other ideas? Thank you for the question. As we all know, the concept of cap and reduce or cap and trade has been a focal point of controversy in the Oregon State Legislature these past two years. And I believe that we as Oregonians have, all of us have the intention to um, be good re, um, uh, users of our environment, to utilize natural resources in a productive and um, level-headed way. The cap and reduce or cap and trade as many people like to call it will um, primarily uh, create a situation that fossil fuels become much more expensive and it has an incredibly um, a, an incredible impact on working families and jobs in this community. And so it is a while the goals are are positive in many cases and I share many of those goals, 
I have driven an electric car for the last four years. Uh, we all do things that help um, look at our carbon footprint. And I think that is an important responsibility that all our organizations have to um, participate in. But uh, the, the cap and trade policy that was presented to the legislature, I think um, created a really steep cliff that would have negatively impacted our community. So it is, it is something that is an ongoing conversation and I expect that we'll continue to have it. And I think it's an important conversation. And I hope that maybe we can have some ideas that would bring more balance to uh, this approach in our state. Do you, have, do you have other ideas that you would like to bring to the Senate? I do. One of the major ideas, I mean, we just watched um, the forest fires that hit our community that burned up far more carbon than somebody's car would over the course of the years. And I hope that we would have a real conversation about how to better manage our forests, protect, um, you know, to protect that environment, to continue to um, plant trees that actually absorb carbon and provide a natural solution to a lot of the issues that we're discussing. How can our agricultural lands be protected while we also address our growing population? I think we have a pretty extensive land use um, policy in place and we've had for over 30 years. So, um, you know, those are local and regional decisions that need to be balanced. And I think that by and large, many of the communities do a good job at that. What plans are in place for immigration due to climate and health issues? I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Well, I think um, we're going to see a lot of people moving from different states uh, because of climate and health issues. What, what uh, plans are in place for immigration that might be coming to Oregon? Immigrating from like Idaho to Oregon. I mean, what I hear, it's going the other direction. <laughs> Just kidding, sort of. Um, I, I Again, I don't understand. Are we talking about people moving into the state? I mean, yes. And what kind of plans would you expect me to have for people moving into the state? We would provide schools and jobs and infrastructure and the things that we do to make a healthy community. Right. I think it uh, goes along with what happens with uh, addressing population growth. Um, we just may have a surge because we have individuals from other areas moving to Oregon because it seems like a, a much better place for them to live. Um, so population growth in Oregon, I think that you know, we, we're, if we're a wonderful place to live and people come and they become positive uh, community members, I guess <clears throat> uh, I'm not particularly concerned with population growth. I think that we have, we're actually an aging community here in Senate District 10, and uh, we're going to continue to need people to move in here and do jobs and participate in our economic structure. That's important to our community. Okay, let's move on. Do you agree that the legislature should pass campaign finance reform for Oregon races? Why or why not? Yeah, I do. I think that uh, Oregon races have become incredibly expensive and quite honestly, ridiculously expensive. I think that there are some things that I support and that we've passed in the past, and I'm gonna continue to look at those um, proposals and policies as they come forward. You mentioned that you there's been some policies uh, that you have supported. Can you be specific about them? You know, I actually would have to go and uh, I'm I'm blanking at the moment, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. You can look at my voter record. It's there. <laughs> Denise, considering that revenue may decrease while needs increase with all of the crises we've had this year, what are your financial priorities for the state? 
I think we're going to have a really challenging time in uh, 2021. The incredible unrestrained growth of government for the past two years is going to make that budgetary process difficult. The financial priorities moving forward are going to be around things that help our economy to grow, um, get people jobs, get businesses back on track so that we can create the economy to continue to fund our government and the priorities that we need. We're certainly going to need to look at schools and education priorities and make sure that um, that those are things that are covered, as well as you know what we need to do from an infrastructure standpoint in order to make sure that we can get goods and services to market. Thank you. Here's my last question for you today. What are your major issues and on what committees would you like to serve? Well, thank you. I think that the issues that we're facing right now are, you know, my major issues are gonna be my community's major issues. And what I'm seeing in my community are things around education, things around jobs, things around, um, you know, keeping businesses open, um, being able to meet, I think, the growing mental health needs that uh, we're experiencing both in with our students, our seniors, and just the impact that COVID and these wildfires have had to this community. So I think there's some important work to do around um, our mental health system and making sure that that is something that is um, that is working to the best of its ability and has the resources and support to the people that really need it. So these are all things that we're gonna be looking at in the 2021 session. I serve currently on full ways and means as well as the public safety sub ways and means and I would love to continue to serving in that capacity. I also am vice chair of the mental health committee and I'm vice chair of housing um, and economic development. And both of those are committees that I'm enjoying. So uh, I love my committee assignments and I look forward to continuing to serve on them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this has been our candidate interview with Denise Bowles, and we really want to sh thank you for sharing your thoughts today, Denise. I really appreciate you and the League of Women Voters for providing this opportunity. Um, you guys have always been a great partner in getting good information out to people in our community, so thank you for that. Um, if people would like to know more about me, please go to my website, www.vote.com the number four bowls, voteforbowls.com. And you're always uh, also welcome to shoot me emails at denise at voteforbowls.com. I'm pretty accessible. I love to have conversations. And I think that together we're going to do some great things in this community. Thank you. And thanks to Capital Community Media for their time and expertise in creating this program and making it available across the state through YouTube and Vote411. Thank you to the several League of Women Voters organizations for being interviewers and for suggesting questions. And thanks to you, the public, for watching your vote counts in order to become a more informed voter. For more voter information, including dates, registration, candidates for state and local areas, and ballot measures information, please go to online to vote. Vote411.org. You have until October 13th to register to vote. Ballots will be mailed to you beginning on October 14th. November 3rd is election day. And please remember that postmarks don't count. Elections matter and make a difference. So remember to vote because your vote counts.